Welcome back to BlauDev, everyone. Today we're going to be finishing up our application with Firebase Storage, and we're going to be prepping the app so that we can submit it to the iOS and Android app stores. I do also want to make note, I'm going to be doing a giveaway coming up soon, and we're going to be giving away a copy of Cracking the Coding Interview. It's by Gail Lockman Dowell, an excellent author, who basically lays out how to prepare for and succeed in coding-based interviews. So if you're interested in winning this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification button so you can be ready for when that giveaway comes up. Also, make sure to follow BlauDev on Twitter so you can also have a little bit more awareness with that and get more Flutter weekly content. With that, let's dive into our Flutter application. The first thing we need to do is set up Firebase storage so that we can call and pull images down from it into our Flutter application. What I'm hoping to do here is, I'm gonna spin this up really quickly, let that get running. Um, I'll let that run my emulator. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna have several avatars stored in Firebase storage, and essentially I'll provide a way for the user to select which avatar they would like to have as their profile image. And so we'll be utilizing um, Cloud Firestore to tell, to tell us and save um, the preference of the user, and we'll use Firebase Storage to store all of our different avatars. That way we could have hundreds and thousands of different photos and not take up a ton of room within our build. So let's, let's get going with that. The first thing that we're going to want to do, if you haven't already, you should have at this point, if not, go back and do it, is make sure you have your iOS and Android apps um, added in to Firebase. I just have iOS right now because I'm only testing on uh, my iOS emulator. I'm gonna go back through and do Android testing later. The next thing we wanna do is go to Firebase Storage. So you'll see here in your Developer tab and click Get Started. I'm gonna click Next. I'm gonna leave it at US Central. It's gonna create a default bucket that's gonna be empty for us. Okay, once you get to this point, once it's been uh, officially built, we're gonna click on Upload File. And you're basically just going to upload the files. And so I've got three avatar images here that I'm going to be using. And these are the same ones that I currently have hard-coded into my application. And so you'll see here my little editor tab. I've got these three avatars. And what I'm going to want to do is I want to have um, both these avatars and the one that's displayed here not be called from within my application, but be called from Fire Storage. So the first thing I'm gonna do in my application, I'm gonna to go to my profile screen.dart because this is where we're gonna be utilizing it. And I'm going to add in the Firebase Storage import. And if you haven't done so already in your pubspec.yaml, you'll wanna make sure that you reference Firebase Storage. And currently, as of the date of this video, it's version 4.0.0. And it does also utilize the Firebase core package, which is version 0.5.0. And so it's important that you get um, both of those packages. Um, you're depending on both of those. Going back to our profile screen, however, we're gonna go to the very bottom, so after all of our code. And this is, um, this is after our profile screen state that we're adding this. And we're going to create a new class called Fire Storage Service. And that's going to extend change notifier. Um, yeah, that's what I want. And we're going to instantialize Fire Storage Service. And then we are going to say static future method, the dynamic response, load image. And it's gonna take in a build context called context and a string URL of the image, or string name of the image is what it's gonna be. And this is an asynchronous async method and it will return firebase storage dot instance dot ref dot child image dot k 
get down the, that's the one down the URL. Okay, so this is going to be our code for taking a URL and returning um, a dynamic image type. Um, the methods for Firebase storage, um, the objects and methods involved have stayed the same. Nothing was deprecated as far as I know for Firebase storage with the latest Flutter Fire updates. So that's nice. You can refer to older documentation if you have any questions or run into any issues um, that are specific to your application. So that's good to know. Um, we are gonna go up, let's see, where do we wanna do this? Let's put it right above list cell. We're going to create a future widget method. So we're gonna say future and it's gonna turn a widget and we're gonna call it get image. And what this is going to do is it's going to return an image um, given a, um, a name for that image found in Firebase storage. And we're going to utilize that class we just created to fetch and download the image from Firebase storage. So we have our build context and we have our image name. Okay. And we are going to make this an asynchronous method because it's a future. And we are going to say, instantialize the image, wait Firebase um, storage server, fire storage service. Yeah, that's what we called it. Dot load image. Pass it a contacts, pass it an image name. Um, and then once we've done that, we are going to say um, image, hold on here. Um, I actually, that's what I want. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna say image, which we defined above, is equal to image.network, uh, to string. Fit will be box fit dot scaled down. Okay. So this right here is going to pass in our image name, the name of what we want to pull down for Firebase storage. It'll call our fire storage service, which we defined down below. It'll call the method load image, which takes in that URL. And we basically call Firebase storage and pull down and download the image and return it as a dynamic object, which back up at our method is going to um, take that and basically we're going to, it's going to take the um, URL of that image um, as found in Firebase storage and it's going to um, place it, we're going to feed it to the image.network um, widget and set it equal to um, our image widget. And then when we're done with all of this, we can return that new widget image. And now this method is ready to be utilized by a future builder. So kind of a lot. Um, so what we're gonna do here for testing, let me see where, I believe this is it. Yes, I placed a temporary placeholder here, but what we're gonna be doing is we want to create a future builder and the future builder is going to, get my commas in here for formatting. The future builder is going to have, um, it's gonna call that ref, oh, nope, I want it to do, it's gonna, yeah, there we go. It's gonna call get image. We're gonna pass it for testing. Um, let me go, I'm gonna need to check. Hold on one second. I'm gonna check back on Firebase just to ensure that avatar one is an actual name of an image. Storage, and it is. So this is the image that we wanna pull, avatar one. 
Okay, and that's the future aspect. Now all we need to do is take the builder piece. Okay, and we are gonna say context and snapshot. And we're gonna say if snapshot dot connection state uh, is equal to connection state dot done. Then we want to return container. And in that container, we want a width of media query dot of context dot size dot width divided by 1.2. Okay, so we want it to be just slighter than the width of the container it's in. Um, and then for height, we want it to be a perfect squared image. So we're gonna just keep that same value. Um, and then the child will be snapshot.data because it should just be an image class already. And if we need to make any modifications to that, um, we can do so in here. This is the widget that's gonna be displayed there. Okay, um, we're not done yet though. That's just if it's a connection state dot done. We also wanna say if um, snapshot dot connection state is equal to connection state dot waiting. Then we wanna say um, return container with the same width. I'm gonna actually copy all of this just so I don't have to repeat it. Uh, there we go. But instead of snapshot.data, we want to return a circular progress indicator. And if it's neither of those, something's gone wrong, and let's just return a blank container. Okay. Reload. There we go. There's our image. And if we do avatar 2, so I have three avatars, one, two, and three. So reload, pull up in my simulator, there it is. And I'll put this just within view. Um, let's do avatar three, reload, there it is. And you saw briefly there is that circular progress indicator. So that's what we're going for. Um, we can utilize the same um, piece so I can say you know, all of this, we can utilize this inside of our, um, in place of our image asset here. In place of this, we can place um, our new method. Oh, I just locked it. And we can add it there too. So off camera, I'm gonna brush up all of this. I'm also gonna add a little bit better data here. And the next video, we're going to go over prepping your application for submission to the iOS and Android store. And so stay tuned if you're interested in that. I'm going to walk through and actually prep this app as if I'm going to submit it. And I probably will submit it um, once I brush up the few uh, details that they're going to be picky about. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. Again, if you're interested in that giveaway of that coding interview book, then be sure to turn the notifications on. That way you can stay tuned and hear about it as soon as I announce it. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll catch you guys next time.